My name is Pastor Tessin Gul Khan and I welcome you to Bible Insight and today is the word for us about outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The word we will focus on is going to be outpouring or pouring out of the Holy Spirit. We'll go to Joel chapter 2 verse 28. It says, then afterward I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and even on the male and female slaves in those days i will pour out my spirit pouring out of the uh, of the holy spirit is the need of this hour it's a need of our times because we are living in the end times my brothers and sisters the church has been divided over the topic over the subject of holy spirit and the baptism of holy spirit for so long i would say for over 15 1600 years and um, there has been division Because the people who do not speak in tongues, who do not receive the Holy Spirit baptism or who do not have who, uh, the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they say that we, we feel the Holy Spirit when we pray. They say we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit when we worship. They say that we see the work of the Holy Spirit whenever we come to the presence of the Lord, which is fine, which is actually 100% correct. But on the other side, the, the people who have received the Holy Spirit, like Charismatic Movement or the Pentecostals, they actually look, look down upon those people who do, who do not believe in the baptism of Holy Spirit. So that's the problem. We must understand there are two separate things which are identifiable separately. And one is called the work of the Holy Spirit. Other is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the church and the folks and the believers all around the world must realize that those both experiences are valid and they both are active and they both are part of a believer's life. So you, if you have work of the Holy Spirit in your life, that's perfectly fine. This starts happening even when we were sinners because as if, if that wasn't uh, for the Holy Spirit, How would, we, uh, how would we feel connect, uh, convicted of our sins? Where, where and when did we feel that we must come and repent in the presence of the Lord? That was Holy Spirit who helped you in thinking about your sin and realizing that we are a sinner and we must come and reconcile with the Lord. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of people believe in, in those denominations who have not received the baptism of Holy Spirit as yet or do not believe in that They, uh, they normally teach each other or they justify by saying that we get filled with the Holy Spirit as soon as we get baptized. So some people get baptized even at the child level as, as infants, which again is a, a topic which we will cover in one of our next uh, uh, videos. So I believe that they uh, name the work and the experience of the work of Holy Spirit as the baptism of Holy Spirit, which is actually a totally different experience. So we do not get baptized by the Holy Spirit as soon as we get baptized in the water, as soon as we repent from our sins. We are led by the Holy Spirit into that event and then we are still being led by the Holy Spirit even though we haven't received the baptism of Holy Spirit as yet. But the uh, Bible tells us in Acts chapter 8 where Philip went to Samaria and then he got uh, a lot of people converted and he got them baptized into the water. There were a lot of testimonies. But then the church in Jerusalem, they had to send Paul and John, sorry, they had to send Peter and John to go and then pray for those people and lay, the, lay hands upon those people so they, they, they can then receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We must realize that if they were already baptized in the Holy Spirit at the time of the baptism of in, in the water, uh, why then Paul and John uh, had to go and so why then Peter and John had to go and baptize them uh, or pray for them so then they can baptize, they can get baptized in the, in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 19, it says when Paul went down from Ephesus to, to where Priscilla and Aquila and uh, Apollos were, And he asked them that particular question, very detailed, very, very open, very, very clear. He said, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they said, we don't even uh, know. We haven't even heard that Holy Spirit was poured. So then they, uh, they sat in the prayer. Paul baptized them in the water and then he prayed for them. So then they could receive the distinct experience of the baptism of Holy Spirit. I believe that uh, this is exactly what has happened and you can read it in Acts chapter 19. And this is exactly what had happened in, um, in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 10 at the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 2 when the, the, the fellowship of 120 people 
including the 12 disciples and Mary and all sorts of other people who were the first believers. They sat together in the upper room and they received the baptism of Holy Spirit, even though they had the experience of the work of Holy Spirit at the resurrection day when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And the next day he turned in the room, uh, he turned up in the room where they were all uh, sitting behind the closed doors. And Jesus said to them, peace unto you. And then he breathed upon them. He actually blew on, on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. That was the work of the Holy Spirit. And 40 days after, at the day of ascension, he uh, particularly, he told uh, his disciples and said, uh, stay in Jerusalem until you receive that promise, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because you still haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can read about that in Acts chapter 1 and then eventually Acts chapter 2. So in the end times, the word is outpouring. In the end times, I believe as a humble servant of God that this outpouring will be way, way bigger than, it's going to be uh, many folds bigger than the first outpouring which had happened 2000 years ago at the day of Pentecost when the, when the first disciples received powerful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, in the, and throughout the history of the church, we still see that, we see that uh, the Holy Spirit keeps on working. And so many people, centuries and hundreds and thousands of people for centuries, they've been receiving the Holy Spirit and they've been doing some great amazing stuff in the kingdom of God. And I believe in the end times, God will do a final outpouring, a final rain, which will soak us from head to toe. And we must get soaked in that rain of the Holy Spirit. We must get soaked in that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And if you are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, ask for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, ministries and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And if you are not yet baptized in the water even, you must repent and then give your life. So then, then you can receive the Holy Spirit as a gift from God, as a gift for salvation. And uh, once we are saved, we must ask for that outpouring. And God is going to do that. And especially when the Bible says the, uh, the doors of hell will not prevail against the church, how is it going to be possible? It's the only possibility is through the Holy Spirit because he is the helper and we are not fighting against the flesh and blood. We are fighting against the enemy that is spiritual, that resides in the heavenly places. And the, 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 uh, the biggest help we have is the Holy Spirit, which God has given us. And the church is going to go through the tribulation. All the verses in the Bible actually support the idea that rapture will happen, but after the tribulation. A lot of folks in the church today believe that they're going to be raptured prior to any kind of tribulation. And there is a lot of deception out there. But my brothers and sisters, we must be ready. And the only survival we can have and the best survival uh, uh, helper we can have is going to the Holy Spirit in the end times tribulation time. So pray for the Holy Spirit. I urge you as a friend, as a brother. So pray as an individual, pray as a family, pray as a fellowship, pray as a church, pray as a house group, pray as a community, as a city. And God is going to shape all those places wherever you are through that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the world will see, the world will see a great revival right at the beginning, right before, right before the coming of Jesus Christ, right at the end of this age. And uh, when we see a lot of apostasy is happening, a lot of sin is happening and the world is going into a lot of darkness, but that's not the people of God. We will be revived through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at the end times. God bless you all, my brothers and sisters. Keep waiting for next videos. Amen.